committed the usual Zoom uh, WebEx problem, which is not to take myself off mute. Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, February 8th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7.01 p.m. Today's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading defamatory or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channels. Uh, welcome to councillors and staff and delegates who, who uh, may participate in this meeting. At this time, I invite your decorum. Uh, let's move first then to item 2.1 on our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite councillors with pecuniary interest, including those who have de so declared already in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session, and if not already done, to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may, in realizing it, so declare and act at any point. Let's begin tonight with um, notices already received uh, from Councillor Anstead. Welcome, Councillor Anstead, tonight. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, through you this evening, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.4.1, the accounts, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and along with that, on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Councillor Barons. Welcome, Councillor Barons. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I would declare a conflict of pecuniary interest on the accounts 5.4.1 as well as 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw, as I have grandchildren attending the North Perth Spinwright Child and Family Centre, as well as the St. Mary's daycare and after school programming at both centres. Thank you. Thank you. And next up is Deputy Mayor Kellum. Welcome, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Okay, we're not uh, seeing evidence that he's here yet. The clerk is checking. Okay. So the clerk has advised that at this point, uh, we consider Deputy Mayor Callum absent until he arrives. And when he does, uh, we will afford him the opportunity uh, to uh, make his verbal declaration uh, on this matter. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other councillors with a declaration to make on this um, on this uh, matter? Seeing none, uh, let's explain the virtual processes. I will, as usual, be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that are put before us tonight. I'll do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental We'll follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have uh, another say beyond their supplemental will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, councillors and, and guests, um, I'll let you know if I don't hear you 
Uh, you don't need to ask me about that unless I intervene. Uh, further, I ask everyone to maintain a mute state during the web conference unless I call on you for a verbal reaction. Should our votes uh, not show up in eScribe, which is our voting technology, I'll call on councillors when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, and then return to mute. That brings us to item 2.2 on our agenda. I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda of tonight's meeting that reads simply as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Uh, Councillor Seiler, can I call on you to be our mover tonight? Yes, I'll move that, thank you. Thank you. And um, Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on this matter? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, uh, it's Councillor Rothwell. My vote didn't come up. Thank you. Nor did mine on the other side of Britain. It's Councillor Johnston. I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you. And that's carried. Yes, that's right. We're the same one. Okay, so thank you, Council. That's carried. Um, the, uh, that brings us to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require Council's recognition and or action. Looping them expedites our business. However, any Councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are three items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular Council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? If so, please indicate to the clerk through the chat function. Let's begin with Councillor Rathbaugh. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd. I'd like to uh, discuss uh, the uh, item, uh, the letter from the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Mr. Clark, regarding the Municipal Modernization Programming, take number two. Uh, thanks. Let's um, maybe we can just move this along. Um, why don't you? Uh, are there any other councillors first who have items to extract that you're seeing? Okay. So um, let's keep on the path of considering a, a full vote on this and uh, not have a partial vote on the consent agenda. Um, Councillor Rothwell, you're up. Go ahead and, and share your thoughts. Well, oh, thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. I just was. Uh... Uh, wondering as to whether uh, our municipality was uh, uh, planning on making application to uh, intake number two. I know we were su successful in intake number one, and perhaps we'd be looking at a report, and I see the turnaround time of uh, the application is fairly quick, the middle of March. So maybe staff can let us know. CAO Snell, perhaps. Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Rothwell. CAO Snell, did you uh, want to address that? And, and welcome, by the way. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Yes, our plan was to bring back a report either to the February 22nd meeting or the first meeting in March to look at the uh, uh, submission. And uh, from there, they were looking at um, certainly the implementation of, of the first uh, modernization program um, report from KPMG. Thank you. Anything further, Councilor Rothwell, on that one? No, thank you very much. Great, thank you. All right, so um, not seeing any other questions or, or wishes for extraction here. So I have a resolution for our consideration that consent items 3.1 to 3.3 be received for information and the minutes of the February 1st, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Richardson as our mover for this one? I will move that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on, on that matter? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. 
Uh, next up then is um, item four on our agenda. And uh, let me sort of pull the right paperwork here from my book. Uh, we have uh, one public meeting that's proposed tonight to deal with land planning and use matters. To facilitate the public meeting, we must temporarily adjourn from our regular council meeting. I have before me a motion to make that happen. It reads as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.11 p.m. for the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the following. An application for a zoning bylaw amendment uh, from MHBC Planning on behalf of property owner Dell and Bonnie Cressman. Uh, can I call on Councillor Duncan to serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on the motion to adjourn to a public meeting? Seeing none, let's have that vote. There we go. That is carried. Thank you. Um, so, Council, we are temporarily adjourned for the purposes of this meeting. Um, so, this is a public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for a proposed amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. I welcome all those who've, who've joined us tonight for this purpose, including those who may be watching on our, our distribution feed to YouTube. The purpose of this meeting, this is a statutory public meeting pursuant to the Ontario Planning Act to deal with an application for an amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw submitted by MHBC Planning on behalf of property owner Hasta Farms. Correspondence, reports and comments received regarding this application will be considered tonight by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comment concerning this application will be given an opportunity to do so a bit later in this meeting. Anyone wishing to appeal Council's decision must make verbal submission during this public meeting or have made a written submission to Council. Those who want to receive notice of the municipality's decision concerning this application must notify the clerk by email or telephone, giving their name, uh, mailing address, and telephone number. At this time, I'm going to call for a summary of this application and proposed zoning bylaw amendment. That's going to be offered tonight by Mr. Sean Yilmaz, who is the North Perth Planner. Welcome, Mr. Yilmaz. Thank you, uh, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. The applicant on behalf of the property owners have applied for an amendment to the North Perth zoning bylaw in an effort to meet a condition of a recently approved County of Perth application for consent file B63-20, which effectively severed a parcel of land for the purpose of creating an individual, an individual lot containing an existing grain elevator operation and accessory uses. This includes an existing dwelling. This may sound familiar as a County of Perth official plan amendment, um, also known as OPA 195, was also required prior to the severance as residential dwellings are normally not permitted to be included in the severance of ag agriculturally related commercial and industrial uses. As such, the proposal has been before our council on two different occasions and we are now just applying the zoning provisions to the site. To recognize the existing operation and the existing residential dwelling that is accessory to the operation, a proposed amendment to the zoning bylaw is being requested, which includes site-specific provisions identified as ACM-21 or the Agricultural Commercial Industrial Zone-21, which exclusively permits the grain elevator operation and accessory uses, including the dwelling. The property is a large agricultural lot located east of Trowbridge and southwest of Listowel. The, prop the property has historically functioned as a grain elevator operation with the surrounding lands cultivated. The severed lot, which contains the grain elevator, has approximately 210 meters of public road frontage along Road 166 and 127 meters of frontage along Line 81. The lands are irregular and shaped 
um, and we'll have an area of approximately 5.2 hectares or 12.8 acres. If approved, these lands will be removed from the agricultural zone and placed into the site-specific agricultural commercial industrial zone. Uh, the normal provisions of this zone will apply. The severed lands or the farmland contain no building or structures and are approximately 55.4 hectares or 136.9 acres and will remain in the agricultural zone. The proposed amendment, however, does include a provision on these lands which will prohibit a residential dwelling from establishing in the future and is identified as A-62. This, this is to further strengthen the agricultural nature of these retained lands. Section 1.1.4 of the Provincial Policy Statement promotes the diversification of the economic base and employment opportunities of rural areas to supporting the growth of goods and services. With Section 2.3.3 permitting agricultural uses, agricultural related uses, and on-farm diversified uses within prime agricultural areas. The existing grain elevator operation is considered an agriculturally related use and it is appropriate to be located in an agricultural area with the operation and its customer base benefiting from its close proximity to the farm operations. Additionally, section 5.4 of the County of Perth official plan provides that small scale commercial and industrial activities that are primarily and directly related to agriculture and necessary in proximity to farm operations may be located in the agriculture designation. So as long as it meets the criteria found in the County of Perth official plan um, and also within section 5.510. Um, this has been addressed in the staff report and the planning justification report submitted by MHBC planning. The agricultural commercial industrial zone permits several uses. However, if approved, this zoning bylaw amendment will only permit the existing use, the accessory dwelling and any accessory uses, buildings and structures. As such, it is the opinion of staff that the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is in conformity with the provincial policy statement, meets the intent of the County of Perth official plan, and complies with the municipality of North Perth zoning bylaw. It is staff's recommendation that council approve the application for a zoning bylaw amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yilmaz. Um, at this time, I'm going to direct to the clerk and ask about uh, notice of, me of public meeting details and its distribution. My uh, audio and visual settings here. Okay. Notices inviting persons to the remote public meeting were mailed on January 18th, 2021 by first class mail to landowners within 120 meters of the subject property and by um, email to the applicable agencies. The notice was posted on the subject property and on the municipal website on January 18th, 2021, advising of tonight's public meeting considering this zoning bylaw amendment. And I have not been in receipt of any correspondence regarding this application for a zoning bylaw amendment. Thanks, Clerk Bearfelds. Okay, so that brings us to the sort of open forum opportunity. Um, first, are there any comments from those uh, in attendance who are in support of the application other than the applicant who are not councillors. Uh, Burfelds, have we had any uh, ahead notification of intent to participate in that way? Okay, so we do have the agent for uh, the petitioner in attendance should we need uh, uh, questions answered uh, at later point. Um, in terms of uh, those in opposition to the application, are we aware of anyone who's registered ahead of this meeting for the purposes of, of voicing their opposition to this with their funds? No. Okay. So uh, that brings us to the opportunity for the applicant or the applicant's agent to speak. <clears throat> At this time, do we know, is there a desire from the applicant's agent to speak or present, or is, is she just available for the purposes of answering questions? Okay, so I'm, I'm being advised that, that she's indicated she is here to answer any questions that council may have uh, in the session that follows. Um, if, if otherwise, um, please reach out to Clerk Bearfelds at this point and, and tell us through the chat function. <coughs> I'll wait a few, a few seconds here to make sure. Um, I, I am here to answer questions. Uh, 
but I do not have any comments at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, so um, that brings us to the end of opportunities for public input. And uh, now we come to the uh, session of this meeting where council has the opportunity to ask questions or make comments. Councillors, do any of you have questions or comments to make regarding this application? Clerk Bearfelds, are we seeing anything? We are not. Okay. So I'll read the statutory notice here with regards to future actions. Notice of the decision will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. The Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And with that, uh, we bring our public meeting to a close. Uh, I have a resolution to enable us to move back into regular Council. And uh, let me read that out for us and, and uh, seek action from Council on this. Uh, that the, the public meeting for the purpose of a planning act application is now adjourned at 7 21 p.m and the council reconvenes into regular open council can i call on you to be our mover for that yes i would move that thank you thanks and councillor andreessen will you serve as our seconder yes i'll second that motion thank you thanks any discussion or debate about this motion to end our public meeting and resume our regular council meeting Seeing no evidence of that, let's have that vote. And that is carried, which means we are reconvened into our regular council meeting. Pursuant to the public meeting council, we have two matters of business. Um, still under the same item, uh, item 4.1. Uh, the first is a resolution that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the application for a zoning bylaw amendment affecting property described as lot 10, an east part of lot 9, concession 3, 6308, line 81, Elma Ward, in the Municipality of North Perth. The proposal is consistent with the Provincial Policy Statement 2020, conforms to the policy policies of the County of Perth official plan and meets the intent of the North Perth zoning bylaw. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that resolution? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. And now for the bylaw, <clears throat> the bylaw number 13-2021, being a bylaw to amend the North Perth zoning bylaw number 6-ZB-1999 as amended be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? So moved. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would gladly second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried as well. Thank you, Council. That brings us to item five on our agenda. Uh, reports from our departments and key staff. Uh, this evening, we have no reports from the CAO's department. Um, however, Chris, did you want to comment at all on uh, the uh, comments from the province today with regards to COVID and whether there are implications for the organization? Thank you again, Mayor. So as of um, is likely aware, the, the stay-at-home order has been extended until um, February the 16th. Um, there are some immediate changes being um, 
invoked um, for our small business owners um, permitting up to 25% um, capacity. I'm still waiting on some details on, on that, that part of the announcement. And at that time, um, we'll know better um, as we come back out into the, 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 the staged areas or the colors that we were used to before. Um, and hopefully we'll have that information um, closer to the 16th as we, as we move forward. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, appreciate that. Um, Council, any quick questions for CAO Snell on, on where we're sitting with COVID at this point? Okay, we're not seeing any, so we'll move forward. Thank you. Um, uh, that brings us to item 5.2, uh, which is um, from the clerk's department. And uh, we have one item, 5.2.1, uh, which um, Council is invited to extend the appointment of one of our peers, Councillor Matt Duncan, to the Board of Directors of the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority uh, for uh, the year 2021. This is a fairly uh, common matter. I think we've done this a few times now since I've been in the chair. So um, uh, this should be fairly familiar to all of us. Um, I have a resolution to that effect, Council, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints Councillor Matt Duncan to the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority Board of Directors and the Maitland Source Protection Authority for 2021. And I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for this. Yes, I would move that motion, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Anstep, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that, thank you. Thank you, any discussion or debate, Council? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. That forward. <clears throat> uh, we have um, well, one item tonight uh, from our manager of programs uh, pertaining to uh, recreation facilities fees. Um, so uh, for item 5.3.1, council is to consider an amendment to the North Perth rates and fees bylaw that will, allow, that will update, sorry, fee schedule H pertaining to fees charged for various recreational activities, programs, and site rentals. Um, I'll call on um, Ms. Amy Gangle, our manager of programs, to give us a little bit of a summary of that, if she doesn't mind. Welcome. Certainly. Yeah. Thanks, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, yes, before you is the proposed fee schedule for the 2021-22 season. Uh, our rates are effective May 1st. Uh, what staff did was they compiled some comparisons for the Recreation Advisory Committee's consideration. Uh, we did provide them with uh, summaries of what 2%, 3%, 4%, or 5% increases would look like. Um, in our analysis that we evaluate in our region, we have um, uh, outlined that the 2% increase in comparison to our neighbors puts us at a mid-high range. Uh, compar compared to those surrounding municipalities. Uh, we, um, after some good discussion at the Recreation Advisory Committee level, uh, they made the motion in support uh, for a 2% increase this year, acknowledging the current pandemic conditions, how difficult those might be on our user groups and um, feeling that that would be uh, the closest reflection of an increase that uh, we can do for this year. Available to any questions if you have any. Thanks, Ms. Gangle. Uh, anyone with questions or first comments from Council? We're not seeing anything. So, Council, we have, here, we have a resolution and then a bylaw to consider. Uh, first is the resolution reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth proceed to approve the proposed amendments to the recreation facilities fees of May 1st, 2021. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that one? So moved. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. 
Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one, Council? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. And next up then is the bylaw. And the bylaw uh, reads as follows, that bylaw number 14-2021 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 160-2015 schedule H. Be introduced read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed. And the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that one? I so move it. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. Um, I'm in favor. My vote, my vote didn't appear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Estet. So with Councillor Estet's vote, that's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, next up then is our uh, report from the Treasury and Finance Department as item 5.4.1 staff is brought forward for council review the accounts as of this day, February 8th, 2021. I'll note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will have sent themselves from consideration and voting. Others, are there any questions about this for our staff? Seeing none, um, let's uh, turn to the resolution here. That the following summary of accounts be received by council for information. The total at the bottom line is $918,974.78. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? I will gladly move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. So let's move on to the next item. Next up is item 5.4.2. Uh, council has been uh, provided with a report outlining the increase in its budget and proposed increased amounts payable from our tax levy to the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority. I'll invite uh, our treasurer and director of finance, Ms. Hale, for any comments. Ms. Hale, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. Maitland Valley have circulated their 2021 package, including a, an overview of 2020 and um, their levy detail for uh, 2021 with uh, an increase for North Perth. As you can see, um, the increase for North Perth is a little more than others due to the increase in our assessment we make up 98 percent or 90 pardon me 98 percent of our municipality is in the watershed and um, at this time uh, council is asked to consider uh, supporting um, this budget for the Maitland Valley uh, um, and if there's any other information that I can provide I'd be more than happy to do that Thank you, Ms. Hale. Uh, Councillors, any questions or first comments on this? Okay, we're not seeing any, so I have uh, a, a resolution for consideration that is as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority proposed 2021 budget package for information and further, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth supports the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority's proposed total 2021 budget of $1,624,182 with the Municipality of North Perth's general levy apportionment 
of $351,974. Tell us what you want. It conveniently falls into your court. Would you like to serve as mover? I certainly will. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder for that? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Uh, I'm in favor. I'm still having some problems with eScribe. Thank you. Thank you. So with Councillor Anstead's vote, that is carried. And uh, we wish you luck, Neil. We'd like to have you back. All right. Um, thank you. That's carried. Um, let's move on then to item 5.5, reports from the Environmental Services Department. Uh, we have two items tonight. Item 5.5.1 provides council with its annual summary reports for the North Perth water system. I'll invite Manager of Environmental Services, Mr. Mark Hack, for his comments on this. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Um, council may recall we, we see these reports each year. They're required by uh, regulation that we provide them, provide these to council for their information and for their approval. Um, I'm going to start with the annual reports. The annual reports look at uh, any significant expenses that would have been incurred during the past year. They look at any adverse results. They look at sampling in a fair bit of detail um, where they look at the number of samples that are taken and they also look at um, the results of those samples and the ranges of those results. I'd remind council that the small systems, when we look at the inorganic and organic sampling are required every five years and the, for the large systems like Nor um, Listowel and Atwood, those uh, inorganic and organic testing results are required every three years. And when you see fluoride and sodium in there, they're five years for both systems. And then finally, at the end of each annual report is um, any sample results um, that are above half the maximum allowable concentration need to be noted. So I'm just gonna work my way through each of these as, um, as you have them in your package. And starting with Gowanstown subdivision, um, there were no significant expenses in 2020 and there were no adverse results. Um, the next couple of pages have the microbiological testing and the inorganics and organics. And there's nothing really of note there, except for if we go to the page five of that report at the bottom, where it lists the uh, inorganic and organic um, parameters that exceeded half the MAC, we can see that arsenic um, is listed four times there. It's done quarterly now because it's been over half the MAC. If council recalls um, previously in the last year or so that um, the allowable concentration moved from 25 to 10. So we're much closer to that uh, and we'll continue to monitor that uh, as required. That will continue on for a long time, the testing on a quarterly basis. We move to the Atwood annual report. Atwood did have some expenses, significant expense. We replaced a high lift pump there with approximately $10,000. There were no adverse at all. Moving again to the last page, it was page seven. This is, there are two wells in, in Atwood. This is combined, the testing. Um, you can see the only parameter that's above the half MAC is fluoride, uh, which is a result of 1.19. The maximum allowable is 1.5. And I remind council that this is, fluoride is a naturally occurring um, in, the, in the water, is not um, added like in some municipalities. I move to Listowel. We did have some significant expenses that are noted on page two. We did the downhole video and a well rehab at well five, that was $160,000. We replaced the flow meter at well four for $10,000 and repaired the flow control valves at well four and five for $3,500. On page three, we did have one adverse that was reported. It was a total coliform result of two in the distribution on September 30th, we did what we were required to do. We resampled and retested until the samples came back with no TC. And that's, that was uh, completed on October 7th. 
And basically, if you skip all the way back to page 11, to where the uh, different parameters that exceeded half the MAC, you'll see fluoride for well 4, 5, and 6 were above the half MAC. And as well, well 4 um, arsenic is above half the MAC, just barely. The half MAC is 5. And so there's a, those are just above that. And finally, Molesworth. There were no significant expenses in 2020. There were no adverse results. And skipping again to the end of the report, it just fluoride comes at 1.1, and, and the, the level is, allowable level is 1.5. So those are the annual reports. I move into the summary reports that are then also required. And basically the summary reports are just like they say, they're a summary of the system. They have a system description. It's looking at the volumes that are pumped um, and the flows, and then any non-compliances from uh, the annual, that would have been noted in an annual Ministry of Environment and Conservation and Parks inspections that are done. So again, continuing in the order that they're in your package, we start with Atwood. Um, there, as I mentioned, there's two wells in Atwood. The flows, when you total them up, complete uh, the, the pumping was at 13% of the rated capacity for the system on average. And then the peak day, the most pumping that occurred on any day in the year was 36% of the capacity of the system. There were no non-compliances. And um, that's basically it for Atwood. If we move to the next one, which is Gowanstown, again, there were no, no there were no non-compliances. And the flows for on average were 13% of the rated capacity with the highest peak flow on any given day of 40%. Looking at Listowel, there's three wells in Listowel, and if you combine them all together, the average capa uh, the capacity that was used was 21%, and with the peak being 42% on any given day. We did not have an MECP inspection in 2020. They didn't get it done. They have done it now, but I haven't got the results back yet. So there are zero noncompliances as there was no report. And finally, Molesworth. Molesworth used 10% uh, of the capacity on average of the system. The highest peak day was 18%, and there were no non-compliances. So th that's basically what's in those reports. I would be happy to attempt to answer any questions if anyone had any about any in of the individual systems or any, about any questions about the testing that's done. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hackett. Um, just a procedural question for you, Mr. Hackett. The clerk and I have just been sort of conferring on this. Um, earlier, when you were introducing your report, you indicated that uh, it was both for, for information and you said, and approval. The resolutions that we have before us uh, for both this and the next matter are just for information. Do you need council's approval? Do we need to include that in the resolution? Actually, no, I, I probably misspoke there. No, we just need to, my requirement is to provide it to council for your information. Okay, very good. Thank you. Glad to have that clarification. Councillors, any uh, questions or first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any. I can say, as usual, well done. And uh, I have a resolution then for our consideration with regards to this report uh, that reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received for information the 2020 water system summary reports and the 2020 annual water reports. I have taken note that Deputy Mayor Callum has joined us. Um, Deputy Mayor Callum, will you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thanks. And um, Councillor Anstead, will you serve as our seconder for that? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Okay, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Uh, next up then is item 5.5.2. .5 
tempted to say second verse, same as the first. Uh, this was the annual summary reports for the North Perth wastewater system and services. And again, Mr. Hackett is our lead guide through these ones. Welcome again, Mark. All right. Um, yeah, this is the 2020 annual wastewater report. We're required to buy our amended environmental compliance approval or ECA to do this each year and provide it to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks by March 31st of each year. So I've kind of in the comments included everything that's included in it. And I think it'd probably be easiest just to jump right into it. And if we went to page three, I will go through some of these things. So the first part of this, the uh, monitoring and analytical results, basically is a look at volumes of flow that's treated. So uh, the average flow for the for the system for the for the year was 6.574 megaliters per day, um, and the treatment plant is rated for 9.03 megaliters per day. So the volume that went through the plant was about 72% of the capacity of the plant. And then if you move down to the, the first column or the first chart there, that is looking at information about what came into the plant or influent quality. And so we look at different parameters, CBOD, suspended solids, total phosphorus, and TKN. Looking at the next chart on the next page, we're looking at what's going out of the plant or what is the effluent quality parameters. And so there's some of those listed there. The next chart down, shows again those same parameters but in the loading and the one that really matters i think that's of, of interest to here is on the next page and this is looking at what came in and what came out and you can see um, in that first column where it says concentration or sorry the middle column concentration percent removal so the cbod that came into the plant we removed 99.5 percent of it if you look at the suspended solids that came into the plant, we removed 98.8% of the solids. We removed 97.1% of the total phosphorus and 96.9% of the total K, um, TKN. Uh, then moving on to the next section is operational offsets, which were there, there were none. We had the uh, next one is the maintenance activities, and I won't go through those, but those are some of the things that occurred during the year. Um, Next one talks about how we do our sampling, where we do composite samples with our automatic samplers. Um, moving into part five on page six, uh, we have the monitoring equipment calibration. We're required to calibrate all of the equipment and um, flow meters and things like that. And we do that and provide that information to the ministry. This, uh, this is an important one, I think, set number six, which is meeting design objectives and I want to just explain a little bit remind council our ECA tells us the limits that we have to meet or we're out of compliance and then they also give us some objectives to strive to meet and those are what we are to try to put our best efforts to to try to achieve those and so if we look at those four parameters CBOD we were able to achieve the objective um, 11 out of 12 months the total suspended solids we were able to achieve them 11 out of 12 the total phosphorus was achieved eight out of 10, and the ammonia was achieved 10 out of 12 months. Um, not as good as we've done in past years. Uh, there is a few reasons for that. One of them was with the upgrades going on, uh, did affect the treatment at times. And also we were doing, during the summer, we had one whole side basically down for the summer while we were doing some work that I'd mentioned previously on the aeration section. Uh, we replaced all the membranes. We're going to be doing that again next year, so hopefully we'll be okay. Um, I would note, though, that at no time we were ever out of compliance, even though those numbers kind of showed we didn't quite meet all the objectives, but we were never out of compliance. Section 7 then talks about um, sludge generated and um, the volumes and locations. Uh, there's a nice little chart on the page 7 that shows the different sites, the different dates, and the volumes of sludge that was hauled and applied to fields. Uh, which was 37,075 cubic meters. Uh, section 8 talks about that we did not receive any um, order complaints that were brought to the office. We had no spills or bypass information or um, events that occurred. Section 10 talks about our imported waste summary, and that is the septic receiving station. There's a chart on page 8 that has, um, and this is required by our ECA to, to track these things. Um, 
It has all the different companies that bring things in. So septage includes all the different septage haulers and then uh, some of the other companies, the volumes that they bring and the average loading of BOD and TKN that we get from them. The rest of it, uh, there are just a couple things, but that's basically the report. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. Uh, Council, any uh, questions or first comments on this report? We're not seeing any indication of that. So uh, good job, well done. We appreciate all the efforts that are made by your team and we have a resolution for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the 2020 Annual Wastewater Report for information. And I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that. Yes, I'll make that motion, Mayor Todd. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on this one? Let's have that vote. I am in favor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. With Deputy Mayor Kellum's vote, uh, that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, no reports tonight uh, that I'm aware of from our manager of operations or from our fire chief. That brings us to item 5.8. Uh, this is an extra agenda item. As we learned at last council meeting, we uh, will be proceeding with a review of um, departmental business plans and uh, so last time we talked about the uh, general administration plan in the office of the CAO tonight we have the opportunity to review two different plans uh, the first is the uh, plan for the environmental services department uh, which includes dedicated staff addressing water supply and distribution waste water collection and treatment and solid waste I'm going to call on Manager of Environmental Services, Mark Hackett, to present to us uh, our mandate for Council's review so we can understand where we need to go with this, and then um, and an overview of his service, and then entertain a discussion and debate on this report. Among our purposes, Council, is to validate the key tactics that are in the plan and to identify places where we can pause or perhaps remove actions that, based on current workload projections, could overload this particular team. We will also attend tonight to a second business plan uh, that is from the Programs and Recreation Department and facilities as well. And this department attends to care of municipal facilities, including recreation and non-recreation, playgrounds, parks, open spaces, and trails, sports field maintenance, turf management, and horticulture, pools and splash pad management, program management of sport, recreation, and community sectors. So we have two of these coming up tonight. Council, I propose we use the, a process very similar to the one we used last time. And for the purposes of that, um, I'm going to introduce a motion that will allow us to suspend the, the usual procedures of debate and, uh, and allow us to have a structured and facilitated conversation. So um, the, the motion then that should be on the floor is to suspend the procedural rules for the discussion of matters pertaining to item 5.8. Councillor Rothwell, can I call on you to be a mover for that one? I so move. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate, Council? I don't know if the deputy clerk has uh, that, so I'll just ask, are there any opposed? Oh, she has something. So let's have that vote. It's in the scribe. She set it up for us. We're going to call deputy clerk here Flash. That's your new nickname, I think. Thank you. That's carried. Um, so we've suspended the rules temporarily. And we'll proceed in the manner that we used last time. Uh, in terms of that, uh, let's uh, let's just review where we're going to go. First, we're going to hear from the department lead, 
They're going to give us an overview and, and any uh, explanation they figure that we need to help us understand what we've read. Uh, then we're going to focus on resolving any of our information needs that are outstanding. So if we have questions or something that's a little fuzzy, we want to get that cleared up so that we have all the information we need uh, to help us turn our attention to uh, the next stage. The next stage is idea generation and, and brainstorming. And in that section, we have the opportunity to identify what might be changed and or how it might be changed. And finally, as we move to the uh, resolution of each of our discussions on these two business plans, uh, we're gonna create something of a synthesis or summary of potential considerations for staff. And the, the resolution that we'll look at it for each of them will include some of the things that we've recommended to them but we want them to come back with their, their best opinion about this and present us with a, um, a response to each of the items and potentially an updated plan consistent with their responses. Um, so I think that's how we're proceeding, if that's all right. And uh, because uh, we have environmental services up at the top of the list, I think that means we're turning things over to you, Mr. Hackett. Okay. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Um, I'm happy to get started with this. I will jump though, if you wanna go right to page eight, and we may as well get right into it. Um, looking at our department, the environmental services department, um, at the top of that page, you'll see we, we look after the water supply and distribution. We will look after the wastewater collection and treatment and also solid waste. And that's about 12 staff altogether um, throughout those departments. And if you calculate based on uh, their available hours in a year for those staff, we come up to about 20,500 base hours. Um, the next column over talks about estimated overtime. And originally when I did this, I had that, uh, we came up with a number of 650 hours and that was based off the previous year's overtime. Um, and then I thought a bit more about it and I thought, you know, that's not really accurate because I could hire 20 more staff and I would still have the majority of that overtime because that overtime isn't really from extra work or, or work going along. What it's really from is from call-ins. And unless we were staffed 24 hours a day, we're always going to have call-ins. That's how we man the place after hours, basically. And so um, I didn't think it should be included. So originally I had 650 hours. I've got it down to 115 hours. And that's more reasonable for, um, I think, what overtime should be for our department. Then that being said, moving into the different strategic projects that are for this department. And in, in 2021, the Environmental Services Department is only the lead on one project. And that project is 1.7.1, which is to promote to promote greenhouse gas reduction by the community and the municipality. Um, that one I had put in six weeks worth of time, 225 hours, it was an estimate, really wasn't sure exactly where to go there. But one of the things I think is mentioned in the report, um, with the climate change coordinator position, if it's moving forward, that would be able to lessen that hour substantially about the amount of time that would be put into it on my part. Um, so the rest of the projects that are listed in the strategic um, projects are all ones that I'm either contributing to or supporting. So if we go to page nine near the bottom, I'm going to talk about the ones that are listed in yellow. So if we go to 5.3.2, the first one there, that one was to invest and enhance the use of GIS information in the municipality. This is something our department does a lot already. Um, this was about expanding it into other departments. So it was one that I thought if council so, true, so chose, we could actually um, probably defer that a little bit because we're already pretty well versed in our department. And this was really more about getting other departments um, looking at our GIS. Um, 1.4.1 to 1.4.3 on the on page 10 are ones that I am supporting in and it would had more to do with the official plan so they weren't a lot of hours but again it was ones not maybe not deferring but that maybe would be put towards the person who was the lead on those projects um, and finally the other one that I had highlighted in yellow was 4.1.3 which is the support and promote of North Perth as a community of character um, that one was one that Chris had mentioned last week, and I would have the same comments. I, I have five hours, I think he had four, um, but we, we've been supporting that for many years and would continue to do so. I'm not sure it would take um, that five hours of time and off. So those all added up together were, um, would reduce 
um, the number of hours that were over capacity in this department by 60.5 hours. Um, the next section down at the bottom of that page 10 is the departmental projects. So those are things that are based from the capital projects for this department in 2021. So all the, um, that came to, I think, 627 hours. And um, most of that time would be my staff's time. Uh, some of it would be mine, but the majority of it would be on site. Um, some of these things are jobs that we would be taking on ourselves. The staff would be doing them. So basically, on the, if you pack, go to the, the last page, if you add up all of the different things, there's three components of this. There's a strategic component, which was 694.5 hours. The capital projects, which I just mentioned, which are 625 hours. And then the overtime at 115 hours. That adds up to 1,436.5 hours, which is equivalent of 0.82 FTEs. Um, again, depending on the climate change position, we could that could be reduced um, even further. And um, th that's basically what I have to say about it. Um, if you have any questions, then I think we can move on to the next part. Councillors, any questions so far? Okay. Um, Mark, is there anything further to your overview of this? No, I don't think so. Um, I've given a lot of thought. I, I think the overtime originally we were at 19 when we went over 1900 hours and it, that dropped it down to 1400. I do think that I probably won't spend, I think 225 was probably a little bit high for hours on the um, uh, climate change project that I'm the lead on. Um, that's probably a little bit high, but depending, and if that position is filled, if, if Rebecca is continuing her role of that, then um, that would be substantially less out of time out of my time. The strategic portions that you see, that 694 hours, 0.5 hours, um, that's majority of that is my time. Some of that would get delegated to staff, but majority of it would be my time. The other part, the departmental projects, that's like I said, that's the majority of that time is for staff um, out at the wastewater treatment plant, um, not myself. Okay, I think one of the things we've been doing, Mark, is we've been sort of paying attention to some degree to um, the roll-ups and sort of the, the full-time equivalent deficit in uh, the department. So what I kind of got from you was that, um, you know, depending on certain council um, nods here, you might be about a half a full-time equivalent short uh, against your uh, consolidated operations and uh, projects plan capabilities. Is that, is that right to you? Yeah, yes, I think that would be pretty close. Um, you know, the, the 627 hours for the departmental projects, I think a lot of that could be absorbed into what the guys are doing now. This is not like we need a special one person or a half a person to perform these things. These would get absorbed into their daily things. It's it's really the 695 hour, 94.5 hours, the, st the strategic plan, um, strategic portion of it that, that would be affected. So, um, you know, it's maybe closer to 700 hours in reality, uh, which would be even less than a half a person. Depends on how you look at it. Okay, and if I might ask the question then, um, to close that gap, uh, what are the possible options that you see if council were willing to have that gap closed? Hope to reverse it. Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we would do. Uh, it depends which, if all of these projects went forward like they did and, and whether or not my, my time that I predicted is accurate or not. Um, you know, we gave it our best guess on some of these, of how much time, like especially the, the, the ones near the end, all the supporting ones, it's hard to really tell how much time and they were kind of guesses. Um, even, you know, I know I talked to Lyndon before about 5.3.1 uh, about the uh, asset management plan. Like we've done a lot of that work already, but there's still lots of work to be done. 50 hours may be really shy. It could be, 
it, you know, depending on how much I was involved in it, it, it's tough to say at this point. I don't know if that really answered your question at all. Mr. Yeah. I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask a, a different way. Um, if in fact you needed the extra capacity, would you see a path towards hiring either a, a contractor or a consultant or engaging uh, same, or would you see um, an ongoing need? Would you project an ongoing need that might call into question whether we should hire a new employee who's a half-time employee uh, to support you? Um, I would think it would be like this is just the one year we're looking at now and as as our CAO mentioned last week didn't really like th these the next couple of years are just as busy so I don't know that our, like it, may, it might have to be a fairly long contract if we were to do it a, a, that way um, whether or not th 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 some of these things could be combined with another department and then look at one person that's what that would be my suggestion is that that there'd be one person across a number of different departments that would be able because a lot of these projects you're going to see on um, the, the plans that follow mine. Um, I know definitely Linden's, a lot of them would be very similar. So that one person maybe could be a full time person could be to do both. Okay, yeah, that's what I was sort of getting at is, you know, what are the, what's the feasibility of uh, contract or consultant versus uh, having a an employee, uh, either part time or full time, and it sounds like we have a little bit of thought there. Um, okay, so Council, you saw I was sort of leading off already into the questions to get, you know, some more information. Again, this is about sort of collecting uh, facts and information that will help us think through uh, uh, and have the, the, the sort of common platform we need for idea generation. Any other questions or things of fact that anyone wants to? pursue at this point? Do we have anyone on the list? Okay. Councillors, anything? Okay, um, Mr. Hackett, with regards to um, some of the items that you yellow lined in your report, things that you indicate could be um, deferred, um, are there there are any that seem particularly sensitive and that um, you would rather not defer, but you could defer if we asked you to? Um, no, I think I'd be comfortable with deferring any of them. I, I, like I said, it may not be my time, but someone would be spending time on this. I don't know how much input I would have into those. That's sort of how they were assigned. But the I've, in the past, I haven't had a lot of input into the official plan by any means and those Three of those at 1.4.1 to 1.4.3 are all dealing specific, specifically with the official plan. So I, I wouldn't have any problems with those. Again, 4.1.3 with the community of character. I don't have any issues with that. Um, it would maybe be the one about the GIS. But again, I don't think it's a super high priority. I think it um, is something that, as I mentioned, our, de our department and Lyndon's department as well and Public Works use GIS extensively and daily. Um, we will continue to do that regardless. Um, it's a matter of whether or not we're trying to outreach to other departments. And there's some value in that, I believe, but I don't know that I would say it's a super high priority, but that isn't completely my position to call what's a priority and what it isn't. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. Let me actually redirect that to see with regards to the GIS role that Environmental Services had originally projected to... Uh, contribute to, um, what are your thoughts? What, what does the organization need with regards to GIS and uh, can we safely um, remove services uh, projected role in this uh, and uh, not have uh, implications for the organization? Actually, uh, in, in, in the long term, I think GIS is actually one of our um, possible saving graces in in how we deal with our workload, um, both open data and the collection of data and how we use that data to me is one of the things that moving forward that if all staff are more comfortable using GIS, we actually could become more efficient. I certainly do agree with um, Mark that um, the water and wastewater department are already using um, GIS and data collection to a huge benefit 
Uh, we're no longer requiring you when they come to the office for paper maps. They have it all available in the field. I think the GIS corporately can create huge efficiencies. So um, I certainly understand why um, environmental services is, is sort of taking the stand there, but I think fundamentally it would be um, setting us back a little bit if, you, if we were to defer that project. Okay, so let me just see if I got this straight. Um, Mr. Hackett is suggesting that his involvement or his team's involvement in GIS uh, could be thinned or eliminated. Um, he's not proposing that we uh, kill or, or you know, not move forward with GIS because it's already a, uh, it sounds like an organizational competency in environmental services. Um, so I don't think he's recommending that the whole organization go after GIS, uh, just that his team's involvement may not be as substantial as shown in the chart. Is that your read, uh, Mr. Snell? Um, yeah, and I guess to me, this is one actually um, area that we actually could, um, to me, hire some specific outside consulting help that would alleviate um, probably both um, Mark's involvement and Lyndon's involvement going forward with, with GIS across, across the department. Um, so I think um, there are some areas that, for example, we could alleviate environmental services that could be covered by um, some consulting help in 2021. Okay, so that's a possibility. Um, all right. Any other counselors, any other questions that you have or, or you know, I mean, it, it seems pretty straightforward. I'm not hearing a lot of questions. I'm, I'm trying to get part of GIS. I would like to turn the page and go on to idea generation to see if there's anything else that we need to be thinking about. But before we do, I, I just wanna make sure that we've been careful about asking all the questions that uh, should come up at this point. So any other counselors have questions? Okay, so let me turn the page. Uh, we're, we're moving on to sort of idea generation and brainstorming. Uh, Mr. Hackett has helped us immensely already by suggesting uh, several areas in which uh, there may be some time savings. And he's also helped us sort of refine the possibilities um, that he may need an additional half of a full-time equivalent for staff. It could be a contractor, it could be a staff member, it could be a consultant in theory. Uh, Mr. Snell has pointed out that maybe we could do with consulting for GIS. The first idea that comes to my mind is, uh, as Councillor Rothwell mentioned earlier in the meeting, there's the efficiency phase two. Is there some opportunity for us to put in an application or a proposal for the purposes of GIS enhancement in the organization? Okay, so there's one idea. Councillors, uh, any of you have additional ideas beyond those that have been uh, proposed uh, by Mr. Hackett already as sort of yellow lined items in his report? Okay. Um, we're not seeing anything, uh, Kirk Bearfeld. Okay. So given where we're sitting then, um, looks like uh, Mr. Hackett has a pretty good plan. I'm, I'm going to test this with council in a few minutes, obviously. Um, and that council um, will, let me see if it's council's will, um, allow Mr. Hackett to proceed with thinning his plan by the uh, yellow lined items with the possible exception of the GIS thing, which perhaps needs a little bit more consultation between him and other department heads, just to make sure we're not losing something important to the efficiency of the organization. And there is a potential perhaps to apply for an efficiency grant in this new round that relates to GIS furtherance, for the lack of a better term, in the organization. Does that sound like a reasonable synthesis so far? I'm seeing a few heads nodding, that's good. Any comments? Councilor Barrett, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, regardless of whether we actually get funding for the GIS or not, I would prefer to keep it in the business plan. I think it's important as we move forward with technologies that we keep it up to date. Thanks. 
That is a very sensible uh, suggestion. Thank you. Um, so I think maybe where the sticky point is with regards to GIS is whether uh, Mark can fully thin the hours down from his department that, that has been uh, documented in his department's plan. Um, uh, he's implied certainly that where we stand now is that environmental services is in a very good position with regards to using GIS. And so uh, outside of his department is perhaps where the contribution would be made and sort of cross lighting the rest of the organization into this. That's what I'm assuming is your intent, Mark. And perhaps that's just a negotiation between you and CAO Snell about um, the priority of that and the, the broad organizational context. I feel like I'm badly, let me turn it over to CAO Snell. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, certainly. And I think, I think one of the things that when um, senior staff um, sort of regroup after these council sessions is we're going to have to have some of those conversations wholly um, as a group and then sort of, um, for lack of a better, see where everything lands. But that, that sounds, as you surmised, it sounds pretty accurate. Okay, so I mean, I, I'll, I'll completely agree with Councillor Barron's comments that GIS should not be lost. I think we all know that it's important and important technology and is doing remarkable things. So um, we'll just leave you with that. I don't think any other, uh, any other councillor disagree with that premise that GIS is important that we need to keep it in the organizational work plan. So I think I got a reasonable summary. I'm kind of hoping that between uh, between um, Pat and, and Danette, they got some, some notes there. Um, I, I think, uh, councillors, last chance for you to have uh, any uh, comments on this, uh, but I think the summary I gave a few moments ago, um, accepting the GIS uh, matter uh, to make sure that it remains a priority in the organization and that, that environmental services does its part, whatever that's decided to be. Um, I think we, we could consider a motion to close this, this review. Anyone want to object to that? Okay, well, I'll put a motion on the floor then. Um, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth directs staff to consider um, the following revision opportunities to the 2021 Environmental Services Department uh, business plan. Those are the ones highlighted in yellow in Mr. Hackett's report uh, with expression, specific expression uh, about the preservation of GIS um, capabilities in the organization and uh, furtherance of those capabilities. And um, further that uh, the department brings forward a report presenting staff opinion and action on the aforementioned revision opportunities. I think that kind of gets us there. Does that sound right to you? Okay. Um, so given that, let me just see who's, uh, who's up on the uh, motion list here. Councillor Johnston, does that sound good to you? Would you serve as a mover? That sounds great to me. Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Yes, I will serve as a seconder. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any discussions or debate? Last things you want to put uh, into this resolution for action by the Environmental Services Department? Okay. Danette may be kept up. Maybe there's just sort of a placeholder motion there, but uh, if Danette has something for us, let's uh, let's have it. And that's carried. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to move to the uh, second business plan. Um, I really just feel like I'm singing Henry the Eighth. I am, I am tonight. Uh, same process, different plan, but same process uh, to the extent uh, feasible. And that means that um, we're going to call on Ms. Amy Gangle, manager of programs, to present this plan. And, um, and uh, we'll start with uh, welcome, Amy. Thank you very much. Um, yep, similar to uh, what Mark highlighted is that um, we have uh, general descriptions of the roles and responsibilities from our department, um, including all of the seasonal staff. This includes seasonal, part-time, summer staff, 
we're upwards to 27 FTEs for this department. And those are off and on different seasons, um, depending on the workload that we have there. Uh, looking at the total number of hours and looking at all of the projects and actions that are listed in there, we are the lead on 10 of those projects. And our um, total summary results in an overcapacity of 2,981 hours. This is equivalent to a 1.48 FTE. Uh, we've reviewed things, the highlighted areas, just keeping in mind that our um, goal here is working on our sustainability and being able to keep up with the growth of our communities, making sure we have good quality standards that we're maintaining. So the items that I've highlighted to remove, um, if we remove those, we still feel that we can maintain some stability and um, or sustainability and some growth. The total number of hours that we've highlighted it's approximately 391 hours. We also want to highlight the proposed organization is the entire recreation department, which includes programs as well as facilities. Uh, just being aware with the um, uh, department splitting into facilities and infrastructures and then to programs is that next year's uh, business plan will, will disseminate this information into um, two of those plans holding on and taking those responsibilities this year, but then um, isolating them to, to fit where is best. Knowing those two positions, there are some efficiencies with being able to focus on those. So there is a possibility that those hours that we've highlighted will be less. These again, were, were best guess for us. Uh, open for any comments from council of areas they would like us to highlight just to get your thoughts of uh, where you'd like us to go thanks Ms. Gangle. okay let's begin with the the, the usual sort of flow of these discussions uh, councillors do you have any questions about fact or matters of fact that you would like clarified uh, information that you need that you haven't seen in this uh, business yet uh, to help you clarify your thinking about its current state and future state. Uh, Councillor Andreessen first. Yes, uh, thank you through you, Mayor Todd. Um, I just have a question for Ms. Gangle around um, connecting and I think it's 3.1.2. I'm just going to um, scroll up there. And I can't find it at the moment, but I, I, I believe it talks about um, reducing and connecting, um, like promoting the trail system and promoting events. Is that corrected at 3.1.2? Three point one point two is connect and promote the trail system through North Perth. Yes, thank you. That's the one. Thank you. And you have it down as six hundred um, hours. And so I'm. Is that more like just promoting it, like promotional purposes, um, Ms. Gangle? So this is a combination of promoting the trails as well as the maintenance. So this covers oh. the maintenance of each of the, uh, the kilometers of trail that's required throughout the summer season. Um, and you'll highlight, you'll note that these are hours that we already have in place in our operating budget. Um, so it, it's promotion, but it does also include the repairs, maintenance of the whole trail system to make sure it's safe for our users. Thank you for that clarification. I was just, that was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me follow up on that if I might, Ms. Gangle. Um, can you describe what is involved in trail maintenance, just so that we understand the, the scope of that work? Certainly. I'm just going to. So, um, with the trail maintenance, uh, it's estimated approximately an hour per kilometer uh, per week. 
um, with regards to if there's groundhog holes, if there's any divots, if uh, in the springtime when there's heavy rainfall, uh, flooding, washouts, um, it is grooming the trail, replacing it with the stone dust, ensuring that, again, these are safe trails for the public to use, for them to walk in and bike and use. Um, it involves um, uh, traveling the trail, inspecting the trail, and doing all those checks to make sure that they're um, uh, that they are as safe as we can possibly make it. We also do uh, trail uh, garbage collection as well as our park collection three to seven days a week, depending on the season. Thank you. I just learned a lot. Very helpful. Um, other questions, uh, facts, or information the councillors are seeking? Fairfelds, do we have anyone identified? Yes. Councillor Barron's is next. Um, yes, thank you, Amy, for the report. I'm just a little bit confused. Perhaps I'm not reading it right. Um, like you need almost one and a half new people. Is, does that include the fact that we haven't actually rehired yet um, for one of the director positions? Uh, for the facility position, you mean? Yes. Yeah, uh, you'll look under the department structure and um, the facility right now, the director of Parks Workers is a 1.0 FTE. Uh, sorry, I'm page two of the plan. Uh, where the splitting this would be um, facility manager and um, program manager two FTEs. So if I, if I can just add to that, I think just for clarity, if we add the facilities manager as per the budget, that would reduce the workload by one FTE. Correct. Thank you. Thanks. And and if I was following the bouncing ball, um, we talked about removal of uh, 391 hours, which would probably move your base from a need of one or eight FTE, one of which we accounted for in the director or manager of facilities uh, position, uh, to 1.25 FTE. So we're talking about a quarter of a, a full time equivalent, perhaps um, necessary between the two parts of the function. Um, moving forward, if, if my math is somewhat right. Yes, my apologies to council. I, I think maybe I've, I've looked at this plan too many times and my numbers are spinning, so my apologies. Um, the other thing I just wanted to highlight is a couple of the components of the major parts of these extra hours that you'll see stem around asset management, and that's also the GIS where our department would benefit from that. We do have some pieces that are in our asset for the financial component of things, but we really don't have a handle of all the everything that's happening in our recreation facilities and non-recreation facilities. So we really need to know what we have, and, and that was agree with Chris. This is going to help us with our efficiencies. We know what we have and if we can actually delve into um, uh, the maintenance, inventory, inspections all in one system, we're going to have a much stronger, effective, efficient system moving forward. It's just that upfront uh, focus to be able to build this and um, we feel it's best that uh, it would be great just to have one person come and focus on that, but that's not going to help our entire staff with getting familiar with the culture of building into the system. So we want to train everybody and have everybody slowly practice with this. And they're engaged. They, they really want to be involved with that. But you'll just note those are the significant hours, and that's where they stem from. Sorry, Ms. Gango, can you draw my attention to the hours in your department's plan? I just am not putting my fingers on the moment. Uh, page 11 of my plan under service delivery plan 3.1.1 there's $1,820 or 20 hours estimated for asset management so that's that's one FTE just like 
you know, as you described, it's, it's not that it's one person or vested in one person, but that's one FTE uh, across a whole bunch of you uh, uh, doing asset management. You know, one of the questions that, that I'm intrigued by in hearing tonight our comments about GIS and asset management is we're approaching this properly and um, whether we wouldn't be uh, well served by um, some dedicated asset management uh, staff. Uh, oh, I think the county has done that, if I'm not mistaken. They hired someone to be the asset management lead for the now, our operations admittedly are quite different, but um, I'm wondering if I can sort of put that back to CAO's comment uh, with regards to asset management. Are we as well situated? Like, should we be thinking about an organizational play as opposed to departmental play? I, 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 there's, there's, I can answer this in two ways because there, there, there certainly is maybe an uh, uh, opportunity to look at. Um, some across um, the board um, assistance with asset management, but uh, kind of going back to what um, Amy talked about too, part of the, the goal of asset management is to have our frontline staff become familiar with their assets, how they should be documenting um, the maintenance aspect of those assets and um, sort of um, managing those assets going forward. I think that was always lacking um, not just in our municipality, but across the municipal sector is um, how how our frontline staff um, view and document an asset. So I think part of it is just um, bringing recreation um, staff in this case, um, sort of to a point um, where the, the public work staff have had to have, have had to come over the last um, number of years. So although I'm not disagreeing that there could be some a benefit to a corporate wide system. I do think that there still needs to be um, a combination of asset management embedded into our frontline staff and, and the facilities and recreation departments. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, uh, with regards to where we sit, though, uh, what I got from um, Ms. Engel's uh, report is that the one FTE probably. Uh, assigned to the facilities management thing uh, that, that probably covers off one of the 1.48 that she initially quoted, although maybe that's a little ambitious because of the nature of shifting responsibilities, um, but that she still, that this department still may be short about a quarter of an FTE. That's sort of what I got. Um, is, is that where you think you sit, Ms. Gangle? Yes, that would be accurate. Um, okay. It is possible again during you know the current situation for 2021. Um, we've always been uh, very conscious of using all of our staff as efficiently as we can. And with the summer programming, if we have numbers that maybe aren't suitable to fill things, we may have some students that we may be able to to have them assist with some of the uh, smaller um, items, then our staff can focus on some other things. So there might be some room to, to work things through during this particular um, situation that we're in. Um, if we were in a non-pandemic symmetry situation, then we would definitely need that 0.25. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Rothwell, you're next. Thanks, Mayor Todd, and thanks to Amy for your report. And I just want to pick up on the last uh, point, uh, Amy, that you were talking about in terms of the pandemic. And clearly, in my view, uh, your department has been uh, significantly impacted by the pandemic over this past year, and certainly uh, as we speak. Uh, I'm just wondering if the business plan specifically uh, tries to uh, take that uh, matter into account. Uh, we've talked, you've talked about using staff efficiently. I appreciate that you are. Some of them have been redeployed to other areas and so on, but I'm wondering if, if uh, during this time when we have uh, ICE taken out of two of our uh, facilities, if in fact uh, we have some of our staff focused on some of these areas that uh, need uh, help to bring us forward, uh, at least in this uh, year 2021. And if in fact, if that's the case, if we 
uh, can't address this uh, deficiency, at least in this year, uh, with uh, using existing staff that would normally otherwise be engaged in terms of uh, uh, the Wallace uh, Arena and the uh, Alma Logan Arena in Moncton. Thank you. Ms. Kittle? Yes, we, uh, we're constantly thinking of that, looking for those opportunities that arise. Um, with announcements changing week by week, it's been difficult to uh, get a handle of that because it takes us time to be able to evaluate the regulations and how that affects us and working with educating the public and, and putting our processes in place. Yes, with the two ICEs that are out, however, those staff are currently supervising the outdoor rinks and the weather is still very cold for, for them, for those to be uh, operating. Um, when the weather is warmer, yes, we've already given instructions that there's some things that we haven't gotten to or we haven't get to right now, we will get to them. Um, when the weather's a little bit warmer and those outdoor rinks, we're not operating them or we look at closing those outdoor rinks and putting a focus into that. We can also you know, look at that option as well, whichever council would like. That's just an example of some things of us shifting our roles and responsibilities depending on where things lie and affect our department uh, under these um, current restrictions. Thank you. Ellen, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't, I, it's not my impression that our uh, recreation staff who've been impacted by council's decision to take up policy and uh, are sitting uh, idle with nothing to do. And um, and as you say, uh, thank you for pointing it out that those outdoor arenas are, are functional and, and people have roles to play in those. Um, any other questions that we're seeing, uh, Clerk Berfeltz, uh, at this point? Um, I, I want to ask uh, if I may, sorry, I've, I'm taking up a lot of the airtime here, um, the oxygen. Um, the Atwood Cenotaph refurbishment, of course, this is a process that's been ongoing uh, since before I was mayor. Um, and it, it is one of the yellow line projects here. Um, what's the thought? Uh, what's the state of the uh, Cenotaph there in terms of its deterioration? And if we take those hours out, uh, besides annoying some some volunteers, um, are there any physical ramifications to that site? Uh, I think it's important, just as as the mayor highlighted, it's important to note that this wouldn't be something that comes completely off of the table. This is just looking at 2021. Um, that said, we have submitted a grant to uh, the Veterans Affairs Canada. We're still waiting on that. Um, so that would be dependent on being able to complete that. Um, the hours you'll see I highlighted that I actually indicated that's part of our, our parks management um, hours that are already incorporated in the uh, initial staff hours that are there. Um, going back and just looking at what things could uh, not um, be a priority for this year. It, that was just one of those items to be able to highlight. Um, it would not be one that I would recommend be ignored. It, um, we're happy to bring that back uh, on the list and uh, unhighlight it. Um, just considering looking at other uh, projects and other needs um, to be able to uh, wait another year. The other piece is looking at, um, it's taken us a lot of time to kind of evaluate what the structures are. Uh, we're in a better place now uh, trying to get the masonry. We would love to have had this completed much sooner. Uh, just it's such a specialty um, structure that we don't want to rush through this and we want to uh, make sure we have the right uh, company and people that can uh, take care and maintain this so that it keeps the structure and integrity. Um, our hope in this process is to be able to do this so that it's not a repeat every three years that we are, are doing something that is going to last a lot longer than any of our previous historical repairs. Okay. Do you feel confident that if we uh, left, if we took this off the list for 2021 and let it to roll into 2022, that we wouldn't see significant problems that would make the pricing a lot worse a year from now? That's a great question. And I honestly 
not sure. Um, it's possible once, uh, you know, pandemic's back, people are, are um, you know, uh, a little bit more open to uh, performing work. It's possible the costs may actually come down. Uh, it's really that is an unknown. Okay, thank you. And um, one more question, sort of the same one that I asked Mr. That is that, you know, if in fact, quarter of a full-time equivalent that's sort of a, a staff gap at this point. Um, what are the creative ways that have crossed your mind about filling that uh, quarter of a person deficit? My apologies. Can you repeat that? Sure. Um, I have to point out. Um, with regard to uh, the 0.25 equivalents, the sort of doodled uh, the balance of staff you need to accomplish uh, those items that are not yellow in your plan. What are your creative ideas for um, uh, finding the resources or support for that? Are you thinking the possibility of short-term contracts or uh, you know uh, consultants or summer students or co-op students? Do you have some ideas there? Uh, yes, um, looking at uh, consultants or uh, summer staff would maybe perform some things that our um, park staff normally do, whereas some of the bit more advanced projects that we have, I'd like to have our full-time staff focus because they've got that expertise and knowledge, uh, but certainly some flexibility um, with uh, our students or consultant if something's a bit more advanced, those would be considerations we'll, we would look at. Okay, uh, reasonable. Uh, any other comments? So, council, we've we've had the opportunity to ask informational questions, and we've had the opportunity to drill into some of the the things that um, have been proposed for uh, removal, referral. Um, anything that uh, you're seeing, council, that that we haven't talked about yet and that uh, you would like considered? Councillor Andreessen first. Yeah. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, at our last meeting, we talked about deferring a few items um, with some other departments. And um, I have a couple that I wanted to share with you. Um, one was 1.6.3, and that's the tri trial of the Driftscape app. And that app promotes um, events and activities. And given the fact that we are, you know, pretty much suspending a lot of activities at the moment, um, perhaps that's something to defer for an, another year at this time. And that was mentioned in, uh, in you know, in terms of the CAO's department as well. Um, I also was thinking about the 4.4.1. That's the newcomer drop-in program. That's something that something that we had recommended at the last meeting to deferring as well. Not that this is a valuable program, which I truly believe it is. It's just that it's hard to do that without inviting groups. And it's hard to do that at a safe distance at this time. Um, and the other one that I wanted to bring up is the completion of the Galbraith Conservation Business Plan. I am just kind of sitting at this point thinking, you know, is this something that is worthy of pursuing given these difficult times? Um, it's 35 hours of work at this time that was listed on, on the sheets. And again, I just, I'm not sure myself as a counselor thinking, is this something that we need to focus on right now? Um, those are the things at this time that I would recommend that could be deferred um, and taken off the list moving forward. And those are my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, very helpful. Anyone else have uh, suggestions with regards to the report? Either telling Amy, no, no, that yellow line, you should not take that off. Or here's a line where you should take it off, as Councillor Andreessen has uh, just pointed out. Anyone else, Clerk Bearfelds? Okay, so I think we're kind of at the synthesis point and where we can sort of say, okay, here's what we're thinking. Um, let me see if I, I, I have this roughly right. 
Um, it, it seems like our direction is to proceed with the hiring of a manager of facilities. That's an intent. And, um, and so that may alleviate a significant proportion of the uh, full-time equivalent deficit found in, in this group, which is to become sort of two groups, but we'll call it a group for now. Um, it uh, seems like we've had a, you know, good explanations about some of the things that they, they routinely and on a project basis do. And uh, that largely um, council has, from what I heard or didn't hear, maybe more importantly, no significant issues with the uh, items that have been yellow highlighted in your report with regards to possible deferral. Um, you've heard my concern specifically about the Atwood Cenotaph, and I just want to make sure that we're not in, in making any delays there, if, if delays are incurred, that we're not allowing it to deteriorate further and create a whole new range of problems for us, as, as uh, you and I have discussed before, Ms. Kango. Um, but also, um, you know, there's continuing interest in GIS as an enabling tool. So be careful if, if you're proposing to take some of that out. Um, there's some concern ongoing about asset management and how we factor that into the, the roles and responsibilities uh, that all of your department has um, and wisdom would appear in, in having that a disseminated um, function. Uh, you've uh, heard from Councillor Andreessen, uh, very helpful, uh, potentially uh, yellow lining the Driftscape Trail, the newcomer drop-in center and the Galbraith business plan. And uh, you've also identified that you may be able to bootstrap some of this through the hiring of, of consultants, um, leaving that uh, open to more detail, or through uh, allocating some summer staff to some of the functions that, that would be appropriate to their uh, capabilities. So I think that seems to me those that's the feedback that has come from, from council uh, tonight for you. Um, and I, I, we have a, a resolution very similar uh, to the one that we considered for environmental services. I'm kind of hoping that between Pat and Danette, again, they got a lot of those notes from the synthesis. Did I miss anything, Council, in the synthesis that I we should, should make sure is heard? Are folks, you seeing any hands raised? Okay, so it sounds like my synthesis was okay. I guess that means I was paying attention. Um, so I have a resolution as follows then, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth directs staff to consider the following revision opportunities to the 2021 Parks and Recreation Department business plan as identified in my synthesis. I'm hoping, Council, you, you don't want me to repeat that. Councilor Johnston, behave yourself. And further, that it brings forward a report presenting staff opinion and action on the aforementioned revision opportunities. Uh, let's see here. Councillor Duncan, can I call on you to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that, but I do have a question. Oh, sure. So let's uh, open discussion and debate anything that we've missed. Uh, let's have the question. Councillor Behrens, let's start with you. Um, just... It's kind of a, a little bit overwhelming and confusing the way um, the recreation one is. And I realize it's very similar to the others. It's just that there are a number of unknowns and perhaps it was mentioned and I perhaps wasn't paying attention, but with the department structure itself and we're moving towards the new structure. And uh, this is probably for the CAO or uh, for Ms. Gangle, is it only the facilities supervisors, those two positions that we don't have hired, or do we have those hired? Or this structure doesn't say, isn't um, showing the new structure that we're proposing. I'm just confused there. So this, this structure is not showing the new structure we're proposing. And I was going to add that into this conversation because um, in in Amy's information, we're probably about as close to flat as we're going to get it from anybody else's business plan. But then with with the addition of the facilities, um, 
manager. However, um, I also think it would be in, it will be incumbent on um, as Amy's new position as manager of programs and the manager of facilities to um, probably look at um, re-updating this plan once the rules are in place too, because the one thing we are adding to the facilities manager position is the entire um, building stock, which I'm not sure has been entirely encountered for yet because this hasn't really been looked after by any one department. So um, we're probably pretty close to flat with, with parks and recreation and facilities. However, um, it's also at, on, at the same time going under um, a fairly significant transformation, both in the programming and facilities side. So it may change significantly in 2022. Um, thank you, CAOs. Now, um, Mayor Kaysenberg, if I may, through you, I think that is a little bit of what my problem is, is that we don't appear to be moving to the new structure, and I would hate to hire, do any hire right now that didn't fit into the new structure somewhere. So. Um, I guess my comment in seconding the motion would be to remove anything that doesn't work towards getting to that new structure as soon as possible. Those are my comments. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Behrens. Um, a, a brilliant comment. And I was sort of alluding to that earlier in my comments about how I didn't think that that sort of estimated 1.25 was going to be a perfect one cleaved off into the new role. Like I, I, you could see how there's a little bit of a challenge there. Um, so I, I think that's that's useful uh, sort of amendment guidance to this resolution. I'm hoping that it's friendly uh, to Councillor Duncan as well, that um, the intent is that, that this council wants us to move forward to the new structure of the restructured um, departments and, um, and then um, make any and additional consultants, summer students, hires, whatever comes from that um, down the road, um, and not rush the not rush now to put people in places that won't exist in a few months' time. That, that would be unfortunate. Um, so hopefully we captured that. Um, is that okay with you, Councillor Duncan? Yes, I'm fully in agreement with that. Okay, and Councillor Burns, that captures your uh, your thoughts. Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. Um, any other discussion, comments, debate about this one? Okay. I think there's a council willingness to see things move uh, ahead on that uh, on that score in terms of the structuring of things. Um, uh, I think we're at a point then when we where we can have this vote. Let's have this vote. And that's carried. Thank you very much, Council. Um, that concludes Section 5.8, which means the, uh, the usual rules uh, come back into play at this point. And uh, let's play them out. Uh, that brings us to item six on our agenda for item 6.1. Councillors, are there any reports you would like to ask of staff or of our committees? Uh, as usual, so identify in the chat function and clerk our files to bring it to our attention. Anything, Pat? No? Okay. Uh, we have received no additional items of correspondence beyond that already shared. Uh, for Council's disposition, that brings us to item number eight on our agenda, which allows Council to consider and enact bylaws. Uh, turning to item 8.1, Council is act, asked to enact a bylaw to provide for the McCracken, my, my tongue is gone, the McCracken Municipal Drain. This is the third and final reading of this bylaw. It's been on our table before council. Uh, Clerk Bearfelds, do you have anything you want to say about this or is it just as straightforward in there? The, the time's up and it's time to uh, to finish this according to uh, Clerk Bearfelds. Uh, so I have a resolution that reads as follows, that bylaw number 186-2020 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works, McCracken Municipal Drain be introduced, read, and considered read a third time. 
and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Let's bring up item 8.2. Uh, item 8.2, Council is asked to enact a bylaw authorizing the promulgation of an agreement with the County of Perth and other lower tier Perth County municipalities pertaining to the provision of a planning service administered by Perth County. This is pursuant to a lengthy process of work that has involved mayors and CAOs, briefings to this council and others, and that has led to the development of a proposed service level agreement. Clerk Bearfields, do you have anything you want to add on this one? Okay. CAO Snell, um, Clerk Bearfields has uh, named you as our informant here. Did you wish to ask, offer any comments on this one? Uh, I, I just add, add to, as you said, this has been um, ongoing work since the BM Ross was commissioned to, to look at the, the issue of, of the planning model for Perth County. Um, and since then has involved um, several meetings with all five heads of council. Um, really, um, although the, the document itself um, is a, is um, lays out um, really the fundamentals around the planning agreement, it really will be um, how all five partners come together going forward with, with um, um, how well this, this model performs. Um, I understand all four municipalities have agreed um, to um, sign the agreement with the county and just do with some complications around um, um, all the human resources. We are moving fairly quickly and looking for a March 1st implementation. Thank you. Thanks, CEO. Uh, Councillors, do you have any questions or first comments on this matter? We're we seeing anything? Okay, we're not seeing anything. So I have a resolution for our consideration then. The bylaw number 15 2021, being a bylaw to authorize a signing of a planning services legal agreement, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this one? I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rothwell, will you serve as our seconder? I will. Yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Anything? Okay, we're not seeing anything, so let's have that vote. Just die. There is, and that is carried. Uh, Council, this is uh, one of those occasions where I just want to say, "Phew!" <laughs> it's it's been a long process. This one, and uh, grateful that we're nearing the end of it. Okay, um, that brings us to item nine on our agenda. Are there any notices of motion from councillors attending this evening? We're not seeing any expression of that. That's what we're to item ten. On our agenda for item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Uh, the usual procedure applies, identify in the chat function and Clerk Bearfelds will give me the list. Councillor Johnston is first. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Just want everybody to know that the uh, public consultation for the budget is up uh, on your say North Perth and hopefully everybody has watched the uh, Britain boys in action in the exciting video that we have on, out on the uh, public consultation. So just encouraging everybody to uh, promote the video and, uh, and watch it. And we're hoping for some comments back from the public. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. And to um, 
Uh, Vice Chair uh, Rothwell, thank you both for your services on this one. Uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing the public engage with this. Uh, I haven't watched those videos yet, but I will. <laughs> Any other announcements that we have tonight? I'll remind Council of my apparent pet project these days, the coldest night of the year fundraising event. Uh, there now is a formal challenge uh, uh, looming from the uh, town of Goderich to us um, in terms of fundraising capability for this event. So I call on all of our community to um, make us look good and, um, and to raise funds for a well-needed, uh, well-deserved cause. Uh, the intent, I believe, at this point is to dedicate those funds to the creation of a warming center for the homeless in our community in the next uh, winter season. So uh, an important uh, thing. And uh, we've made good progress in fundraising, but I did get a sour note today suggesting that Goddard is ahead of us. So uh, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. Any other announcements that we're seeing an indication of? Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, well, that brings us uh, to item 11. Uh, we do not have a closed session meeting of council this evening. That also means that we have nothing to report from that closed session, which skips us past agenda item 12. Uh, that means that we are at agenda item number 13. Uh, council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have a draft here that reads as follows, that bylaw number 16-2021, being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for this one? I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that matter? Let's have that vote. A okay, voting seems to have stalled. Councillor Anstead, did it come up for you? What's... Uh, I'm, I'm exempt from this. Okay, oh, sorry. that's right. And Councillor Barron's is, so I think we're carried. That's carried, indeed. Thank you. Even the clerk missed that one this time. All right. Um, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. She can't leave. Um, all right, uh, Council, uh, we've um, completed the deliberations and taken action on the business that was put before us uh, tonight. Before I read a motion to adjourn, is there any further business? We're not seeing any indication of that. So the, the, I have a resolution that reads as follows. The Council meeting adjourns at 9.03 p.m. To, uh, to meet again for general Council business on Monday, February 22nd, take note, Council, uh, 2021, at 7 p.m. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellen to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Duncan, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will. Thank you. It's not a debatable motion, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, council. This council will meet again in, in its next regular meeting, again using digital enabling technologies on Monday, February 22nd, 2021. The cause for that next week thing is the family day vacation. This meeting is now adjourned. Council, have a great night. Staff, have a great night. Thank you all.